Well, here's what a day's worth of work is able to do. Now, the engine bay, that was the color of the car when I got it. But I just did both front fenders with Rust-Oleum self-etching primer. And it looks like that's what he did the engine bay with before. And my plan is to make it a, a dark gray, kind of like this front spoiler. So right now I'm going to primer the whole car with the spray cans. I can't get anybody to paint it, at least not a decent painter that I found. I want to wrap it, but I, wrapping is 3500 to 4000 and right now I'm being told that you need a clear coat on the car to wrap it. So obviously that's not going to happen for a while. But I wanted to show what's involved with the taking a windshield out because this has cracked windshield. I do have a replacement for it. The top trim has already been taken off, but essentially they pulled back. So there's a, a cup in here that goes around the windshield. And you can pry that back off the glass. And then you've got your bare channel that your adhesive is going to be sitting in. When you do this side, open the door and you pry it back from the glass and then it'll come out. So tomorrow my plan is to do the roof so that that's all set for when the windshield guy comes he can put the trim piece back on and I'll have that done. So every day I plan to do a different chunk of the car, sometimes two if I can. But I thought you might want to see the glass to see how that, oh, I could show you the cup. You can see the U-channel in there that goes around the glass. That's all it does is sit in there. It doesn't get glued in, it just kind of snaps in around the glass. And then the top channel. Same thing, it's got a U-channel on it. And that goes underneath these end pieces. So the top goes on first, then the end piece goes over it. And that's it. Now this one is chipped up. Fortunately, when I got the, the old windshield to replace it, it has a decent top piece. So I left out there. I got one good top and one, the side piece on it. This is the used windshield I'm throwing in. So as you can see, these are how the trim pieces go in the top and the side. And they get a little bit of glue on them, but not enough that they won't come apart. But if you've got to get these out, you need to get your razor blade or scraper in there and get that glue the glue off the glass, off the trim I should say, so that you can get the glass out. Now this came out of a 93 Daytona. The adhesive is pretty rubbery, so it probably cut pretty easily. The 90 to 93 used the same glass, and I think the 84 to 89 used the same glass. At least that's what I hope, because I've got an 86 that I've got a an 87 Daytona that I need to get glass in and I've got a good 86 laser that I can scrape it out of or cut it out of. So hopefully I can get that done and everything will fit. So that's progress so far. One weekend. Now, unbelievably, the molding that came on the car was all beat and chipped up. 
the molding that came on this glass is all good. So how that's possible, I have no idea. But I'm going to take it as a win. For 45 bucks, I got the glass and three pieces of molding. Now as far as taking it off, as I discussed before, you've got a U-channel in here that clips over. And you can see the top corner, this is the passenger side, will clip around. So when you put the, gla the molding on, it will slide up under here. So the top molding will go on first, and then the side molding with that overhang right there holding everything together. And then getting the old molding out, it's all glued. From 90 to 93, they didn't put screws in here to retain it. The earlier models had screws, so that's one thing to keep in mind if you got to pull a windshield. That you got to pull your molding back, and then pop or pull the screws out that retains it. With this one, you're just going to cut between the glue and the molding and keep working your way up. If you need to pull the front spoiler, you got to pull your turn signal out. There's two screws on that. And then inside here, you've got several screws. There's a bunch of 8 millimeter hex and a few 10 millimeter. And they're Fortunately, mine are not rusted, but getting them out of there are tough, but they're all stacked up around here. Okay, on the back of the skirt, you've got some push pins that go into here. One thing I was surprised at in this front bumper is to get those corner reflectors out. There's one 13 millimeter nut on there, but you gotta get at it in here. I was able to use a quarter inch drive with a long extension and get in there, but you've gotta put one hand in from the back to hold it in place, while the other one just lightly turns about three clicks of the ratchet. So it's not an easy spot to get it. You can't get at it from the bottom. You can't get at it from the back or the top. So it, you've only got this limited space to move your hand. It would have been nice if this area was cut out from here. But unfortunately it isn't. One thing I don't like is on behind the front spoiler, they've got the steel plate. I'm not sure what it does got two bolts that hold it on. I think it might be for fog lights. That's about all I can come up with. But the turn signals are up here. So I'm going to remove it on both sides. And uh, I don't see any purpose for it. It doesn't actually contact the front spoiler, the air dam. So it's not a stiffening agent. So we'll get rid of them. One thing I thought I should show when I've got the wheel off are these brakes. It's got 13 inch Woolwoods on it. And these are neon struts. Um, I forget what kind of, the ones from Rich Bryant that he's got out there. And of course the front end, <clears throat> you can see has the lower control arm and the upper rail. This has all been customized, but the wheel has been centered. It's not like when you take a Shadow or a Sundance or even the early 90s Daytonas that had the different K-frame down there. They were about an inch back on the wheel. So you always had interference issues in the back. If you saw my other video on the Daytona, you'd seen that. Um, Tom, when he put this in, moved the control arms forward and the wheels can get full lock without touching back here or up there. Really nice. 
the tires and wheels. I'm really happy with those BF Goodrich tires. And they are the Deep Wars. And ironically, it's the same size as I've got on my Daytona. The blue one that I've been working on. I like the wheels. And I put really huge brakes on with these 17 inch wheels. So I just thought I'd show that until I get it up on a lift. That's probably the best undercar shot you're going to get. One of the neat things I've come across is just a racer tag. I don't know if you can read that. The neat thing is it goes in your drill, you run it on low RPM, and it really just erases details. So this is what the car was looking like after I've primered it. And again, it's Rust-Oleum Automotive uh, self-etching primer in a green-gray color, kind of like an olive drab. And I'm kind of liking it. It's, I just put it on there to keep it from rusting while I'm waiting to find a painter. But um, I can't complain about the color, actually. It's kind of growing on me the more I want, look at it. Not a nice paint job, it's done by a spray can. All I do is sand everything smooth and spray it. But I've seen worse. And so for about 200 bucks paint, a week's worth of work, not bad. <laughs> 